Hello everyone and welcome to the lab. As you know, to become skilled in submucosal dissection and endoscopy in general, you need to train. So with Gene, we're not experts yet, but we're training. We've done more than 50 lesions in the lab since the start of our training, since the beginning of our residency. And that's what we're going to show you today. So welcome to the lab. The goal of today's video is to show you how to acquire and then set up your ex vivo models using cow colon. So the whole process from A to Z, from obtaining the model to assembling it and setting up practical training sessions. All right, let's get started. In our lab, we chose to work with only two animal models that we believe are the most essential for practical ESD training in humans. The first is the pig stomach. This model is particularly suitable for beginners because the layers are strong and easily distinguishable, which makes perforation slightly. Moreover, the delicacy of the mucosa, meaning its fragility, makes the initial stages of injection and dissection more difficult. A two millimeter snare is often necessary for the dissection phase. The second model is the bovine rectum. It more closely matches the difficulty of dissection in humans due to the thinness of its layers. The downside of its fragility is that the different layers are sometimes difficult to identify. It should be noted that bovine rectums are often easier to obtain because they are less desirable and are commonly used in the production of pâté de fruits. In contrast, pig stomachs are more in demand for human consumption in France and are therefore more difficult to obtain. In our practice, the organs are collected directly from the slaughterhouse. In France, legislation requires approval from the Health and Safety Agency, which is the DDPP. The organs must be fresh, not damaged, and frozen as quickly as possible. For bovine rectums, the last 30 to 40 centimeters must be collected using the part that is of the best quality from the slaughterhouse. So now I'm going to show you the equipment we need to set up a model. The first and most basic thing is an endoscopy simulation box. There are different brands and different shapes. We don't have any particular preference. The main thing is that it can accommodate a cow's colon and that there is an opening to insert the endoscope with a trocar. The second thing is the trocar, a laparoscopic trocar. Again, there are different brands and different sizes. The most important thing is the size. You need to have a size that matches the endoscope you are using. We found that the optimal size for our gastroscope was size 12 which was wide enough for the endoscope to slide through easily and at the same time was completely airtight. Next, we need two elastic bands meant for bandaging, quite simply, which will be used to close the colon distally, an electrode, aluminum foil to ensure conductivity, and finally, an absorbent paper for keeping the box clean. So here is the piece of cow colon and rectum that I went to get at the slaughterhouse and that we are going to use. You can see that this corresponds to roughly the last 50 centimeters from the anus. So here you can see the anal end, which can be identified by the external sphincters and the skin. This is an important part to recover because the first few centimeters beyond the anus are the most interesting to dissect, as they most closely resemble what can be found in humans. Here you can see the colic end, the oral end, which is also easily recognizable. You should know that this cow colon when we collect it at the slaughterhouse, we always try to wash it to remove the bulk of the dirt. But before starting the dissection, we always rinse it with cold water to remove any remaining mucus that could interfere with the dissection. We thawed it last night, you need to let it thaw for at least a few hours beforehand. And generally we let it thaw dry without water at room temperature. So after washing, we'll start setting it up in the box. So the opening where we'll insert the endoscope is here. The idea is to place the colic end at this spot so we can work at the end of the colon, at the anal end. I've cut a piece of elastic band to be able to close the anal end. The idea is to close it as distally as possible to preserve the largest possible area for dissection because as we said, that's the preferred area where we'll be able to dissect best. So the main idea is to tie a knot as airtight as possible. 
This is to ensure the air remains trapped inside and doesn't escape during the dissection process. So I'm going to pass the band under the colon. So once I have successfully passed the band all the way through, I then carefully insert the trocar directly into the colon and proceed to make a very important first knot. This is done in order to wrap the trocar and the colon securely together, thereby creating the essential initial airtight seal that we need. So uh, to begin, I will make my first important knot right here, making sure it is tight and secure. After that is done, I will then carefully attach this elastic band directly onto the trocar instrument in order to ensure that the whole assembly of parts is completely cohesive and stable. Apart from that, at this point we have a colon that is hermetically sealed on both sides uh, with a trocar providing airtight access so we can insufflate the colon. Now we're going to attach uh, a piece of aluminum foil to our electrode which we'll place under the colon to ensure electrical conductivity. At this stage we recommend slightly moistening the colon to preserve it and to ensure conductivity throughout the day. And a little tip if you have them, use ice packs to keep the colon cool if you're planning a long day of training on the colon. All right, so now we are ready to begin the process of introducing the endoscope into our anatomical model. Uh, this will allow us to then carefully insert our endoscope through the trocar. We can see that the colon is perfectly clean and we'll be able to go all the way to the anal pole. We can start dissecting at this level. So for us, the lab serves two main purposes. The first, of course, is the educational objective. It's in the lab that we start doing our first dissections before training on humans. Traditionally, it's considered that you do 20 independent dissections on animal models before starting training on humans. And it doesn't stop there. Throughout our training, it's always really valuable to go to the lab to get more hours of dissection in, especially when it's harder to practice on humans. And before starting more complex procedures like colon dissection, it's always useful to do more advanced dissections on animal models because these models offer a certain level of complexity. The second major aspect is research. Aluijan is at this very moment creating a precisely controlled lesion as part of a comprehensive research protocol that we've recently launched, which is specifically designed to evaluate the newly industrialized attractive device when it is compared to more conventional dissection methods, all conducted in a strictly randomized manner. So Aluijan, typically for his return from vacation, started with a lesion without traction, which was quite difficult, and now he's managing with traction, even if it takes a bit of time, Congratulations, if you've made it this far, you now know how to set up your endoscopy lab for submucosal dissection from A to Z. All that's left is for you to practice. If you want to support us, don't hesitate to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and visit attractiridivis.far for more information about our Attractees devices, two adaptive tractions for submucosal dissection. See you next time on...